Uh, my name is Adam Godet. I am a woodworker here in Washington, D.C., and I am a maker neighbor at the Georgetown University Makerhead. We've been doing a series of videos on basic woodworking skills, and this morning we're going to talk about dowel joinery. Uh, if you haven't seen our previous videos, we cover everything from basic wood science to sharpening your tools and screw joinery. And as we go throughout the series, we're going to cover different types of joinery that you can really do at home with just a few number of tools. So like I said, today we're going to talk about dowels. And if you don't know what a dowel is, uh, most people have encountered these, you know, sort of wooden cylinders. And uh, it's basically just a, you know, cylindrical piece of wood. They usually come in longer lengths. Uh, they're often used in arts and crafts projects, but we can use them for joining pieces of wood. And unlike screws, uh, dowels are our first four -way, foray into what most furniture makers would consider sort of fine furniture joinery. So um, it's more of a refined way of joining boards than, uh, than screws, which can be seen as usually kind of utilitarian. Uh, joinery in its you know, purest form is meant to be very strong and long lasting, but also look uh, appealing in and of itself or be completely hidden. And so we talked last time about hiding your screws and that sort of gets us down the road. And as we go on down the line, we'll talk about decorative joints like dovetails and that kind of thing, which are kind of a showy joint. So dovetails are not, or, sorry, dowels are nice because they are relatively simple to do. You don't need very many tools. And with just a little bit of practice, you can uh, get pretty good joints and they're relatively strong as well. So it is a glue joint. So in the wood science video, we talk about the importance of glue and how strong it is. The dowel adds a mechanical element to that as well. Uh, so that gives you a, um, a really pretty robust joint. Uh, James Krenoff, I want to mention, is one of probably one of the top furniture makers of all time. And certainly within the 20th century, he's considered a true master. And he worked with dowel joints exclusively. Uh, so I think that's always kind of reassuring that somebody of that stature uh, believes so strongly in this joint. Now to make this joint, you're only going to need a few tools. The basic thing is going to be a drill and a drill bit. You're also going to need some dowels, which you can buy at a hardware store or Amazon or anywhere online, and you're gonna need to cut them to length in some kind of way. So you have a hacksaw, you can do that with a handsaw, um, but you're gonna to need to cut them down because they're gonna come in a longer length. Um, the drill bit can be a little bit uh, nuanced. So let me take this opportunity. We haven't talked a lot about, you know, some of our more simpler tools, but drill bits come in two basic forms. Um, there's your standard drill bit like this, which uh, just has a relatively blunt end. You see it does come to a point here. Um, but what we're going to use, what we want to use for fine woodworking is called a brad point bit. And you can see that the brad point has this very sharp point in the center and then these two shoulder cutters. And what those shoulder cutters do is actually score the fibers of the wood around the hole. So when you drill into a two by four, you're just, you know, drilling holes into things. Lots of times the wood around the hole gets sort of splintered and kind of janky looking. What the brad point bit does is allows, it scores the wood around that before it starts cutting the hole. So it keeps the hole that you cut with the drill bit nice and clean. And that's gonna be important when we uh, put the dowel in and get that shaved off and clean. Uh, you're gonna have that hole looking nice and like finished, which is the point of the joinery method. Um, so getting a brad point bit will help you. If all you have access to is a regular drill bit, uh, what you want to do is make sure that you use a nail or something sharp to put a starter spot for your drill bit so that it stays nice and centered. The other thing about the brad point bit with this centerpiece is that it doesn't, the bit doesn't have anywhere to go. So your drill, you know, can walk, your drill bit can walk a little bit on you. And if you get an elongated hole, then you're going to have part of that hole that you drill that's not filled by the dowel. And that's just not going to look as nice. So these are all just some of the finer points of, uh, what we're trying to do with um, basic woodworking. With the dowel joint, there's two, there's two basic ways you can do it. You can do it in a way where the dowel shows. So you essentially have two dots on the end of your joint, which can be pretty attractive looking, or you can hide it completely so that the wood comes together and just looks sort of like, you know, like two boards coming together like this. So I'm gonna show you how to do both. If you wanna do the hidden dowel joint or what we might call a blind dowel joint, you're going to need this little tool here, which is called a dowel pin. And uh, let's see if I can get a better view on that. Oops. So 
So basically it's just a, looks like a little hat with a pin on top. And what we do is we're gonna insert that uh, cylindrical piece into the hole and that pin's gonna show us where to drill the corresponding um, spot for the intersecting dowel. Uh, and I'll show you how to use that in just a moment. So um, that is basically the introduction. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this is done. Uh, the other tool you're going to want for this is some kind of clamp. Um, really, any clamp will work. I like these. These are called F-style clamps, and you can see they sort of are the shape of an F. Um, but really, anything that can, that can hold two boards together will do. Um, these are quite handy to have around. You can find them, find them used, usually pretty cheaply. Um, but that's it. To get started, you're going to want two boards. Uh, they're typically going to come together in a 90-degree orientation. And before you get too far along, you're gonna to wanna to mark the center line. So I've already gone ahead and done this here. Now this is obviously not the center of this board, but it's the center of the board that it is connecting to. Um, a quick little math trick here. Anytime you need to find the center of a board, you're obviously gonna to want to take half of it. Uh, and when you get into fractions, that can be a little bit annoying, but anytime you're trying to find the halfway point of anything that is a fraction, just double the denominator and leave the numerator the same. So this piece of wood here is three quarters of an inch thick. Half of three quarters is three eighths. If it were a half inch, it's a quarter. Um, so if you have a, a square like this, that's a great tool to use. If you don't, you can you know, just make a mark here at the bottom, another mark at the top and use your ruler to connect them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, brad point bit into my drill. And just like on the, I'm going to go ahead and move the screen down here a little bit. I will be off screen and you should still be able to hear my voice just fine. Um, and get oriented here. So just like on the video with screws, I talked about drilling in straight lines. And you can really use your eye to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the point on there and I can see that I'm straight this way. And I'm gonna look over and I can actually use the camera here to see that I'm straight uh, parallel with the bench. And with this brad point bit, like I mentioned scoring the wood, I like to actually run the drill bit backwards and that will score the wood around that so that when we go to cut through it, it's gonna be nice and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And just wanna make sure that you're going deep enough that you're intersecting into the other board, probably you know a half inch to three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a second one. Obviously, if you just have one point of contact here, the joint's gonna to wanna to spin, so it's a good idea to have at least two. You can see we've got two nice clean holes there. Now what we're gonna do, we'll step off camera for a sec. Really great thing to keep around the shop are these little uh, bamboo uh, spears, skewers. They're good for, you know, kebabs, but they're also really good for getting into little spaces. And we're gonna need to put some glue on the inside of these uh, dowel joints. So um, I'm gonna go ahead here and put a little glue. Oops, clamp came loose. One thing to keep in mind actually, the vibration of the drill or a sander or anything like that can actually get your clamp a little loose. So should have kept an eye on that. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little glue in the hole here. And anytime you're gluing surfaces together, you wanna make sure that you put glue on both elements. So, Uh, I'm also going to declamp this and I'm going to put glue on the intersecting parts here. Okay. 
Take a couple of these small dowels and we will put some glue on each of these. Tap them in with a hammer. This clamp. Always a good idea to wear closed toed shoes just in case you drop stuff off your bench. Use the workbench to my advantage here. Okay, so now you can see we've got these two protruding dowels and a little bit of a glue mess. So the glue will wipe off easily enough with your finger or rag. And uh, I always have glue all over my finger, so this is no big deal for me. Now this next part uh, can require some specialty tools or you can you know, use any type of saw or any type of thing that you have on hand. This, saw, this is called a flush trim saw and it's just a very, very thin blade and it uh, is meant to cut cleanly against surfaces. So it's meant to make flush trim cuts like this. So I'm gonna take this and just get as close to the piece as I can and just saw this guy off here. And you can see, we got a pretty clean looking joint there. And now I'm gonna take some sandpaper. and just sand this clean. Well, you could watch me sand all day, but you can see that the pencil mark and the glue mark and everything will come very flush and you'll have a nice clean looking joint there. That'll be good and strong. Now, I will say that um, Typically with any uh, glue joint, you're gonna wanna leave it in clamps for probably at least an hour. And I like to leave my stuff in clamps overnight, uh, really if I can, before I put any type of pressure on it. And that just gives the glue plenty, plenty of time to cure and let everything sit in place. Um, but you can see it's really nice, strong joint that we have here um, and uh, pretty attractive looking too. So um, that is a, a dowel joint or a common dowel joint. Um, now I'll show you slightly uh, more involved version, which we would call a blind dowel joint. So in order to do this, we're going to have to drill some holes on the end of the board, uh, unlike the last time, and then we're going to drill the intersecting holes on the, um, on the mating board. So basically, all I've done here is I've drawn a center line on the end of this board, and then I made two spots where I'm going to drill the holes. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into a vise here. And same basic deal with the drill. Now here, uh, I actually need to think a second because um, these dowels are going to be captured uh, by the holes. So I need to think about how long the dowels are and how deep the holes are and make sure that I have a dowel that's the proper length. So because I'm working with three quarter inch uh, stock, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole that's a half inch deep on each board and then I have a dowel piece that's an inch long uh, that I cut for these uh, specifically. Now the question is like how do you know how deep you're drilling your hole? Um, and you can do it by you know sight and that kind of stuff but that gets a little bit tricky so uh, really super simple hack for this is take your ruler stick it on the end of your drill bit here, and then get a piece of blue tape, which uh, is ubiquitous in most wood shops because it's got all kinds of uses. And you're just gonna put that around your drill bit. And so now you have a visual indicator. 
And you'll see that this little flag on the drill bit actually wipes away the chips when it gets to the end. So it kind of cleans up for you as well, which is kind of nice. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill these first two holes. I'm going to do the same thing I did before with the reverse start, just to score it. So you can see the tape pretty much, you know, you know when to stop when it starts knocking the chips off. All right, now you can see I've got these two um, eyes here on there, essentially. The next thing I'm gonna do, so I've got this intersecting board here, and again, I marked the, uh, the center line here, so they should, they should align pretty well. Um, but before I go too far, because my next move is to mark out where that's gonna intersect on the inside of that board, but to make sure I keep them oriented, I'm gonna put a T on both of these so that I know that these are the tops. And that way, should I get them, should I get the boards reoriented, I'm also gonna mark outside. And this way I know that however I orient the boards when I go to set up the joint, they're gonna, I know exactly how to reorient them so that they're the same. So, got my dowel pin here. Again, I'll try and show the camera. Um, just like a little top hat kind of shaped thing with a point. And all I'm gonna do is, now ideally you have more than one of these. I happen to just have one in this size. Uh, I'll also mention that what size dowel you use matters too. Generally for any type of joinery like this, whether it's mortise and tenon, a domino, or a dowel, a good rule of thumb is to use uh, a joinery piece that's a third of the size of your stock. So this is three quarter inch stock. So I have a quarter inch dowel and these are really common and easy to find. So I'm gonna go ahead here and use a ruler to make sure I'm mating these up in a nice good orientation. And with just a little bit of hand pressure, just push those together. And you can see there I've got my spot to start my drill. So then I will remove this guy Helps to have a little bit of fingernail if you got them. And use the ruler to get these oriented nicely. Square. And mark again. And now you can see I've got my two spots here from the pin. And now drill holes there. And again, I've got my depth stop here so I don't drill clear through to the other side. Okay. So now we've got our holes drilled. We'll get our pin out of there. Clean off our workspace a bit. And now all we're gonna do is take the two dowels that are again cut to about an inch and uh, we're gonna put some glue in all of the spaces that are gonna make contact. So each of the holes that we drilled, all four of them. And we're gonna spread the glue around in there a little bit. Do any kind of woodworking with glue, just expect that glue is going to get all over everything, no matter how careful you are. So we all wear aprons in the uh, Maker Hub, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the dowel now. And I'll hammer that guy in. Here, 
and just in case most of the glue got on your fingers like it did for me, I'm going to go ahead and reapply. Go back to my orientation marks so I can see I'm top, top, outside, outside, and that guy out of there. And so I've lined up the spots here. I've hammered it in pretty good, and I'm just gonna clamp it in the rest of the way. There we go. So you can see, really nice tight joint here. So no space in between. A little bit of glue squeeze out there, which means we're good. And um, that's basically it. Now. Uh, probably if I were to do this again, I would put glue on the uh, on the flat parts of the board as well as the dowel. Um, but there was so much around the outside there that um, we probably captured it just fine. So those are your two basic uh, dowel joints. You guys have any questions? Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for watching along. If you do have any questions on any type of woodworking or any of the things we've talked about this morning, you can go ahead and get in contact with the Maker Hub and I'll do my best to answer any of those questions. Uh, if you want to find out more about me or my work, you can check out my website, which is godetfurniture.com. That's G-O-D-E-T furniture.com. And I'm on Instagram at godet underscore woodworking. Um, you can find my stuff in stores around DC. Uh, Shop Made in DC is my main location. I'm also at the Portrait Gallery uh, Museum Gift Shop. The neighbor goods and a few other places around town. Um, if, again, if you have any questions, please reach out. I'm happy to help. And uh, otherwise, have fun in the shop.